here to the uh, city of Rutland in our first annual banquet for the Vermont Western Mass Basketball Challenge. I'd like to uh, welcome all the players and coaches that happen to be here uh, this afternoon as well from the Western Mass uh, boys and girls teams and also from the Vermont boys and girls teams. Just want to uh, mention uh, off the bat uh, that it's uh, going to be a, a great day coming up on June the 28th, the night before, all kinds of activities in uh, downtown Rutland. And uh, we would like to acknowledge uh, the mayor of Rutland, uh, Mayor Morris, and also uh, Mike Coppinger, who is the uh, chairman of the Rutland Downtown Partnership. Also, I would uh, like to uh, introduce you to our first guest uh, this afternoon, and then uh, we'll be eating here and then uh, have the entire program a little bit later. I'd like to introduce you to Mike Blow, who's the president of the Vermont All-Star Challenge Committee. Mike? Thank you for uh, taking the time to come out here uh, on this beautiful day. Obviously, it's tough to come out of the sun and <laughs> this stuff, but um, the event is, uh, it's, uh, is a first for us, obviously. Uh, this is an event that was held in New Hampshire, uh, moved to Vermont. Um, now we're trying to make it a real big event as far as the uh, uh, four-day event. Uh, we're going to have some activities that are going to happen downtown Rutland. They're going to close off the street for us. Um, it's going to be a big event. It's going to be great for the kids here. Uh, have some camaraderie here. We've got a couple of uh, gyms that are going to be practicing in. Um, they're going to be staying at College St. Joe's, of course. You've seen some of the itinerary. Um, it's, go it's going to be a great event. It's good for the kids, great for the Rutland area, for us. Uh, and uh, hopefully all these uh, kids are going on to college. And the ones who aren't, maybe they can pick College St. Joe's. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we have we have some other events. We're going to have hall, um, hotel reservation stuff once the event gets closer to June. We'll have some rates for you people. Um, I have some events that are going to happen up in Killington. If somebody's interested in some stuff up there, uh, camping. If somebody wants to camp out, we're going to be able to do some stuff over the Rutland Fairgrounds here. Uh, some who can't afford hotel rooms or whatever. We're trying to uh, make. Uh, all families available to come to this event uh, at the least amount of expense. So uh, if they can't afford it or whatever, we'll make it happen. So, all right, thank you very much, and uh, let's hope we have a good food here too, okay? Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Mike. And uh, we will have uh, the players introduce themselves after dinner, uh, their schools. And uh, on both sides, boys and girls, everybody, and welcome to the annual banquet for the first uh, Vermont Western Mass Basketball Challenge here in Rutland coming up at St. Joe's in June, on June 28th. And we'd like to welcome all the people once again that are here uh, today, the uh, boys and girls basketball teams from both states. So thank you very much. We uh, do want uh, each one of the team members that are here to introduce themselves, and we'll do that here in just a second. But I'd like to thank the uh, fine folks from South Station here in Rutland for the wonderful meal. Thank you very much. I know some of the uh, players don't want to introduce themselves, but since we decided to give up uh, about three or four players into uh, who was actually here, we decided to do it this way. So uh, we'll start uh, to my far right. If we could, if you know, if, 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 if we ask you to uh, come up to the microphone and uh, say your name. I was going to pass it around, but uh, I'm not sure. When I tried it the first time, it, it kind of broke up a little bit. But well, I will pass it around. Okay. All right. Here we go. Your name and your school. Uh, I'm Kate Jaffe from Essex High School. I'm Kayla Whitman from Mount Anthony. I'm Alyssa Harrington from Mount Anthony. I'm Ashley Hoyt from Arlington. I'm Alexa Johnson from Eastburg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Katie Sullivan from Arlington. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Megan Farrell from Green Island. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm Alex Clapado from Pioneer Valley Regional. Ed Carter from Mohawk Trail Regional. Brian Clark from Frontier Regional. Dan Clark, Frontier Regional. 
Cody Snow, Pioneer Valley. For those of us uh, from Vermont, those are all uh, Massachusetts, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm Lance Boyle from BFA Sedogs. I'm Rob Dorian from Rutland. Brian Blood from Banabro. Jeff Daniel from Windsor. Uh, Gregory Guy, Champlain Valley Union. I'm Gabe Casio from Essex High School. Hi, I'm Lucian Zanko from Essex High School. I'm Greg Hughes from West Rutland. Schneider, Fair Haven. All right, thank you very much. The here from Vermont and Western Mass. We have some uh, special guests. I'm going to introduce uh, the uh, Western Mass uh, boys coach here in just a moment, but I want to introduce uh, a few of the officials that are here today and uh, will be officiating uh, one, uh, at least one of the games coming up on June 28th, whether it be the uh, boys, unless you guys are doing both, are you? I know you're in great shape. <laughs> we have George Cook. Mark Lambert. And Joe Gavin. like to uh, introduce the Western Mass of Boys uh, coach, uh, Bill Robinson from Hoosick Valley of Adams Mass. Thank you very much. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Bill Bartlett, uh, Mr. Fredrickson, for uh, getting us involved in this uh, event. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what it was when they called me. They kind of bamboozled me from the backside, and now I'm here today. Uh, three coaches later, I guess I'm coaching the team. So <laughs> I was just going to organize this thing. Now I'm coaching it. So, but uh, it's, it truly is a great honor to to all of you guys. Uh, my guys here and, and the ladies on there and our ladies here from Western Mass who, uh, who are majority of them are on uh, uh, summer or summer spring vacation right now. We start uh, tomorrow, so a lot of them are on break, uh, school trips and things, so un un unable to make it tonight. But uh, again, thank you very much for having us. We look forward to uh, our week up in in Vermont. Uh, we got a pretty good ball team, uh, ball club. We we feel. Uh, we've got players of the year in their leagues, we've got 1,000 point scorers, we've got all the accolades, we even got two guys that uh, won a state title in Massachusetts this year, so uh, from Western Mass. So we feel that uh, we should be a pretty good group and it should, should be a pretty competitive game to forward to the challenge. Thank you. I'd like to introduce uh, Phil Bartlett, uh, he'll just uh, take a bow, I don't believe he's on the agenda to talk. Phil Bartlett is the uh, boys coach for Vermont, the Vermont team. Who will be uh, coaching his last high school game, quote unquote, uh, at uh, the College of St. Joe's. He is the new uh, men's varsity basketball coach at St. Joe's, by the way, so congratulations on that. Also from uh, U32, Amy Molino is representing the Vermont girls team. And we do uh, have a couple of special guests. Uh, again, I, uh, thanks to the parents of the uh, players. Want to give their parents a round of applause here for being here. Thank you very much. Our next uh, speaker uh, here for our program today is the president of the National Sports Writers and Sportscasters Association. And we are honored to have him here uh, today. And we are fortunate. He was only 70 miles away, especially with the price of gasoline these days. Mike Donahue is a lifelong resident of Vermont. He began writing sports professionally for the Burlington Free Press while still a senior at South Burlington High School. He continued to write in college and also did a short stint at the Bennington Banner and has contributed to other publications including USA Today. Mike also spent more than two dozen years in the Free Press newsroom covering many of the top news stories in Vermont before transferring back to sports in 1998. Mike uh, will be honored uh, shortly by the National Sportscasters and Sports Writers Association. Uh, the early part of May, he'll be presented with his eighth uh, state award as the Vermont Sports Writer of the Year. He also recently won the Yankee Quill Award, the Top Journalism Award, 
in New England for his career as both a news and a sports writer and for his efforts in support of the First Amendment, which is not the right to bear arms, right? <laughs> Mike also has spent the past 23 years as a professor of journalism at St. Michael's College. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Burlington Free Press, Mike Donahue. Inducted into the Vermont Principals Association Hall of Fame uh, when he, the same week he gets back. So, uh, congratulations to Jack. <laughs> Jack and I often talk about we have the greatest job in the world. As as he says, it beats work. You know, I mean, what better way to spend your time than uh, in the fall? at a soccer game or a Friday night at a football field, writing by, about kids, uh, or being in hockey rink, basketball courts in winter, out on a beautiful day yesterday, got into a lot of sunburn yesterday at a baseball game or watching lacrosse or track meet. And it's just a great way to meet a lot of tremendous kids, many of whom I've had the pleasure to cover here. The, uh, as Jack said, I transferred in from uh, news or back to sports a couple of years ago and uh, it, it was sort of interesting uh, when you cover the crime beat you cover the rapists the murderers the boys down the correctional center they never sent you any thank you notes you know thanks thanks for covering my trial you know i knew you thought i was innocent too bad the jury didn't anything like that you know but uh, you know i got into the sports department and suddenly you know you get nice thank you notes from kids or parents about being an athlete of the week or Allstate or something like that. So uh, it's been a great change and uh, it was funny because yesterday a St. Michael student, journalism student, who some of you may know uh, from Bennington, uh, Peter Estes, interviewed me for a final project that he's doing for a writing class. And uh, uh, so he interviewed me for about 75 minutes and he asked me if, uh, you know, about the transfer to sports and why I did it, and uh, I acknowledged I had a little bit of apprehension, uh, you know, going back into sports. It had been a while, obviously, I followed it, but, you know, we have to take those things uh, in stride and figured, you know, I'd step up and do it, but uh, they were short, two people, and, and they were really wanting to fill it right away, and so I volunteered. The uh, then he started pressing me a little bit more as to what my favorite sport was, and uh, I dodged that one like a good uh, interview. And then he pressed a little more, and you know, I finally had to acknowledge that probably basketball is in fact what I consider my favorite sport. And it, like a good journalist he wants to be, he kept asking me, well, why? You know, why, why? And you know, I really think that that one sport where the kids can really show how good they really are and that weather and other outside elements don't come into play. I mean, we've all seen football and basketball, uh, football, soccer games where people have slipped trying to kick the ball in the mud or, you know, windy conditions that attract me or a wet baseball or wet softball. And, you know, that can determine a game. But I just think that in basketball, you've got controlled conditions and it's kid versus kid player versus player, and that's why I sort of, if I have to lean toward one sport and why I like to cover it, it's basketball. Uh, he, uh, uh, unfortunately, is playing baseball, Sam Michael, so I don't think he liked that answer too much. But, uh, uh, but you know, sports is always a little different, and I, I'm not quite sure, uh, you know, People ask why, and I said, well, everything's so much different. I, I said, if people landed from Mars and tried to figure out our sports system here in America, 
you know, I'm not sure they fully understand it. Like, why in golf and tennis everybody has to be quiet, but when somebody's shooting a foul shot, everybody's screaming their head off, you know? And why, why is it that in basketball, if you get want to get a shot off, you know, as long as you beat the buzzer, it doesn't have to go through the goal, but yet soccer and hockey, it does. So there's no consistency. And Kayla, I think you play field hockey, so I'm going to ask you this. Why is it that field hockey games keep going for like two minutes after the final horn? I mean, it's, it's, I, mean it's, I don't get it, you know? I covered a game once, South Burlington Essex, and South Burlington was like up two to one, and everybody's looking at the clock, and of course they stop the clock with a minute to go, and then they go out on the field with a stopwatch, and they kept playing, and they kept playing, and they kept playing, balling out, kept playing, kept playing, balling out again, kept playing, and I'm thinking, a minute's gone by now. And, you know, Essex ended up scoring a tying goal, and they ended up winning in overtime. And I said, it went on for like two minutes, and that's when I first figured out that they really actually keep going until somebody else takes control of the ball. But, I mean, it was just a, too many whistles in that game, by the way, you know. But, and why do they call it a boxing ring when it's square? I don't understand that one either. You know, it, it's just too many things. And in lacrosse, I always love it. You blow the whistle, and they try to figure out what the infraction is, and the ladies have to all freeze in their places and everything like that. But in hockey, when the whistle blows, that's usually when the brawls all start, you know? So it's like, you know, I don't, I don't understand what it is about sports. So, uh, and scoring in tennis has always baffled me as a sports writer. I mean, what's this love stuff? I mean, I, I don't understand it. I mean, why not count it one, two, three, like badminton, and play it at 21? I don't get it. And out of bounds, that's the other one that baffles me. Why is it sometimes in bounds, but sometimes it's out of bounds? And soccer, you can be outside and still be kicking the ball, and I don't get it. But, uh, but in all honesty, I think it's the attraction of the sport. Every sport is so much different. Every season is so much different. There's different kids that come through every year. And that's what I love about it. And it's really great. Uh, I've met tons of great kids, some of them right here. But there's two that actually stick out in my mind that have taught me a lot about life. One, her name is Christine Dodd, who's a BFA St. Albans hockey player who was not going to play her senior year. She had a defibrillator put in to her heart. Um, she had collapsed while playing hockey after her junior year. BFA won the state title. And she was told the week before senior year that she could, in fact, try and play. And, you know, th this could have been a made-for-TV movie for, by Disney. Because fast forward to the state championship game, uh, they're playing Hartford, and the game goes into overtime, and you got it, the puck pops out to mid-ice, Christine Dodd grabs it, goes down the ice, takes the goalie out, scores, they win three to two with about a minute and a half left in overtime. And here's a girl just before the season who was, you know, devastated about not being able to play. And, you know, just a wonderful kid and I learned a lot about life from her and staying positive. The other one is Mackenzie Pratt. Some of you may know Mackenzie. She's a uh, Lamoille Union player, soccer goalie, basketball. Uh, forward and an outstanding softball pitcher and uh, she developed cancer not once in her high school career but twice and here's a young lady that when you talk positive there's Mackenzie Pratt and I did a long story on her and what an inspiration and I've never heard the girl get down and I mean it's, she's just so positive and nonchalant about you know the fact that they found a cancer tumor in her chest about the size of a softball, you know? And they took it out and, you know, she, she recovered, she got to play her senior year, but then once again, the basketball, cancer returned, so they put her on the sidelines. And some of the Vermonters know, uh, she did get to play in the final 19 seconds of the, of the uh, championship game. They did win the championship. 
but it was probably one of the most touching moments I've seen in sports. She comes down to go in over the very odd. She's got a bandana on, and she uh, she ended up taking it off. And one of the uh, one of her teammates going in with her gave her a good friendly rub like that. You know, good luck rub. And uh, one of the other senior teammates gave her a hug. And she went out on the the uh, court, and uh, there wasn't there was a lot of uh, wet eyes in the place. Both teams, both uh, sets of uh, fans, Mount Abraham, Lamoille, uh, standing ovation as she went out there. And it was a real touching moment. And, and she actually almost got a chance to score. She was just going to stand there for 19 minutes, 19 seconds, but Lamoille got the ball back, stole it, threw it down to her. She missed the shot. But she grabbed the rebound, so she's in the scorebook at least for one, you know, for the stats for one rebound. But, uh, you know, and she's now, I just saw her the other day, I was down at Norwich University, and who comes through the student center when I'm down there? But Mackenzie Pratt. And she's having a great year down there. The cancer's all in remission, apparently. She's pitching softball for them. But these two kids in particular taught me so much more about life and what's important, about having good health, about you know paying attention to the things that are important. And uh, I just say to, to the players here today, you know, hopefully you can learn from that. Uh, you know, these are two exceptional athletes who overcame some adversity. Each of you, I'm sure, has overcome some injuries, uh, sickness, whatever, during a season. And uh, it's just, you, you're part of something special here today, being in the inaugural game for the Vermont Western Mass Challenge. So make the most of it. And as Tom Brennan, the coach for former coach of the University of Vermont with a radio show in Burlington, always likes to say, you know, yesterday is history, tomorrow's a mystery, today is a present, so rip it open and have a good time. And I hope you all have the best of time here playing in the Vermont Western Mass Challenge. Thank you very much. Mike Donahue from the Burlington Free Press. And again, the president of the National Sports Writers and Sportscasters Association. When uh, Mike was talking about field hockey, it reminds me of Bob Burdett, uh, who was the sports editor of the Rutland Herald here in uh, Rutland, uh, which is a good name for the Rutland Herald, being here in Rutland. But Bob, uh, Bob Burdett once said, there's no such thing as a field hockey expert. So I guess we know why. <laughs> I'd like to introduce, uh, he's a gentleman that uh, I know uh, many of the uh, Players uh, from uh, Western Mass have played uh, Mount Anthony over the years, uh, Brattleboro uh, also over the years. Uh, this uh, gentleman, uh, if there is a dynasty in the state of Vermont, it is the Mount Anthony boys basketball dynasty, and I might add the uh, girls basketball dynasty too, uh, winning two straight state championships uh, and a few other uh, state championships. Uh, there are a few uh, other coaches uh, that will speak to us a little bit later, but uh, they were probably uh, saying for many years, when's this guy finally going to retire and give the rest of us a chance? And uh, he finally did retire some years ago, but he's still active with the Vermont Basketball Coaches Association. I've been there for many of the Mount Anthony uh, triumphs over local teams, much to our dismay. He broke our hearts here in Rutland many times, but uh, he's one of the uh, legendary coaches all time in this state, leading uh, Mount Anthony to, I don't know how many state championships, but my pleasure to introduce former Mount Anthony coach and now from the Vermont Basketball Coaches Association, Dave Fredrickson. Thank you. Uh, first, if I can fix this thing, uh, congratulations to the players. Uh, <laughs> there, we'll try that. Congratulations to the players. Uh, it's a great honor. You know, you're uh, pioneers. I think it's going to be a great event, and you people are going to uh, start the thing off and get it off on the right foot. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Congratulations to the organizers. Uh, the Vermont Basketball Coaches Association has for maybe five or six years wished for something like this. 
a week together where you know you can get to know each other and the game improves and you form friendships that last forever. But uh, we had, uh, it was like our prayers were answered. We had an executive board meeting. Phil Bartlett came to the meeting, uh, pitched the deal to our board where uh, the game would be in Rutland. You'd, uh, you'd be there for a week and you know, he just kept going on and on. We kept saying, oh, this is great. We, we hardly wanted, we didn't want to wait to vote to accept it. It was just so good. And uh, Phil's enthusiasm is such that periodically at 6.30 a.m. he'll call me and tell me the newest deal that he has uh, got. And, uh, but I think that uh, that enthusiasm is great and that's probably one of the reasons he just got the job at uh, College of St. Joe's. Uh, a little bit of history on this game and, uh, and some comments on the Summer All-Star game. Uh, in 1981, which does date me a little bit, uh, was the first game and I was fortunate enough to be on the coaching staff and uh, in that time I've seen the game grow, I've seen it get better and better, I've watched it decline, seen it almost die, and I think I'm back now for the rebirth of this. But in 81 I learned that uh, if teams are going to be successful, uh, players have to be willing to uh, sacrifice and, and try another role. I mean, you folks are all probably the leading scorer on your team, and you're the number one options and such, but uh, now that you're all together, if it's going to be successful, you have to try a different role. I had a player on that 81 team that was a guard for us, and I didn't think it took him long to figure out there were two other players on that team that went on to play Division I college basketball, one at Boston College and one at William & Mary, so my guy decided that maybe he ought to pass the ball and that would be the way that we would have some success. And it did work out and Vermont won and uh, so I, I learned something from that. In 1988, I had another chance to coach the game and I, I, I saw how perseverance uh, makes all-stars. And it was incredible. It was a kid from Mill River, which is a school, I think it's down that direction just a little bit. He was on the team, and man, he was an example of perseverance. The first day that we were there, he tried to put a move on a, uh, a girl, Huntington, who went on to play very well at Vanderbilt. And uh, he had no luck at all. She just turned him down. During the week, that perseverance showed, he tried to hit on every girl on the Vermont team with equal amount of no luck. But here's perseverance for you. The last day, I happened to see him, and he's going to put a move on a middle-aged cleaning lady. In the <laughs> but that perseverance paid off because uh, Vermont won that year, and uh, I think you got to have some perseverance. Uh, a word to the parents, though, with my story. I would not worry about your daughter up there. I know that they have dorm monitors and all kinds of rules at St. Joe's, so I wouldn't worry about that one. Uh, one last time I was involved in the game, uh, I think it was 99, I just retired and our girls coach asked if I'd like to be, uh, be part of the team uh, as an assistant. And uh, I tell you what, working with girls is different. Number one, the first thing I noticed is practices smell better. Uh, really, uh, it, not even close. Number two, uh, girls are more honest with their emotions. Uh, I, uh, well, Mike mentioned uh, getting hugged and such. I, I, I've never been hugged in practice. And I, was, you know, I was quite taken aback when that happened. You know, the other thing was uh, crying. We had a girl fall out of one of the games, came to the bench in tears. I almost cried. I was just uh, the other thing that I learned is you have to be careful about what you say. I can remember I was teaching rebounding and boxing out. And, uh, you know, I was uh, a little play on words. I was trying to stress the fact that, you know, you've got to get position. And I think my term was, you've got to use your obvious assets. A little play on words. One of the girls said, uh, Coach Fredrickson, are you trying to say I have a big butt? <laughs> and also, you, you, you just have to be careful with what you say. Uh, but one last thing that I remember on that, that the girls had a, a meeting, and they were trying to figure out, who came from the biggest town and who came from the smallest town? Well, of course, none of them knew the population. So they were going to try to figure out the size of their communities by uh, traffic signals, stoplights and such. And, you know, they finally figured out who had the biggest one because they had a lot of traffic lights. 
So for the smallest one, we had a girl, uh, Dorothy, from Cabot, which is quite a small community, and they, they said, Dorothy, uh, how many stoplights in your town? Dorothy thinks, she says, we have two stop signs. <laughs> so uh, you will find that there are some small communities in Vermont, and uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting place. Uh, um, one of the evolutions of this game, uh, and uh, I spoke about the evolution and how it, I've seen it go downhill and such, and uh, I think where it really started going downhill is when they, they started cutting back day after day after day until it got to be a situation, you came in on Friday and played on Saturday, and I just thought that was terrible because as you're going to find out, the great experience is going to be staying with each other and getting to know people. You know, that guy that you thought was a real jerk that played for the other team, you know, said, after that we'd say, hey, he's not, are you, he's not such a bad person. So I'm just delighted that this game is going to be back for a week. I'm also delighted that Western Mass is our opponent. Uh, when I was coaching, uh, we, we did go to Western Mass, and I was very impressed with the quality of players and the quality of coaches, and I was just delighted that we were able to get them up to play. Uh, Bill Robinson, I, you know, I called him, and I'm just very thankful that he stepped forward and, uh, you know, uh, and he's got this thing going for us. Uh, it's interesting, you know, we had a meeting, uh, in fact it was at my house, it's, uh, that was the neutral site from Rutland to Western Mass, so I had a meeting in my own house, but Bill kept saying, he said, wait a minute, you mean all we got to do is show up and play? You know, we don't have to pay for this or buy that or bring this, and, and uh, that's the kind of deal it is, and I just think that's great. Uh, the second reason I'm happy that Western Mass is our opponent is I'm a Western Mass guy. I, uh, uh, I went to high school in Westfield, Mass. I went to college at Springfield College. So uh, I just think that, you know, it's nice that you're our opponent. Uh, it is quite a change from Western Mass to Vermont. Uh, I can remember we went, uh, my, uh, uh, at the time, uh, going to be my uh, wife, and we went up for an interview in Arlington. You might have passed through Arlington and easily missed it. She said, well, while you're at the interview, uh, I'll go shopping. Okay, see, now that, that's the Vermonters laughing because what you shop is there's a gas station, a general store, and the state liquor store. So I, did, I you know, she didn't do a lot of shopping, but uh, it did take me a while to, you know, get to know some of the local customs and cultures and such. I can remember this very clearly. I, I, I told our kids at first practice, I said. All right, we're practicing six days a week. We're going to be in every Saturday morning. We're going to do this and do that. And the kids kept saying, you know, Saturday morning. You, you sure they said? All week long, my players say, we're really practicing Saturday morning. Now, see, I'm from Western Mass. I don't know, but Saturday morning happened to be the first day of hunting season. <laughs> and in some communities, hunting is a big deal. So, uh, you know, I finally said, hey, if you want to play in this team, you're going to be in. So I get in 9 o'clock for a 10 o'clock practice. I'm setting up the gym. The first player comes in, and he's carrying a rifle. Now, in 1963, you could bring guns to school. It's no big deal. But, you know, so I didn't think too much. I thought maybe he's getting it repaired. Because, again, I don't know about hunting season. Two more kids come in. They're both carrying guns. Now I'm saying, I think it's going to be a hostile takeover. <laughs> They don't want to practice, but uh, so it, it was quite a learning experience for me. I did learn to love Vermont, and I'm just delighted to live here. I'm sure that you're going to enjoy the game that you have here. One last thing, when I was doing a little research for this, I came across some pictures of the teams, and uh, they all had their high school warm-ups on, and it was very colorful. So coaches, I hope you consider that. Tell them to bring their own high school warm-ups. Have a great event. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ray. Ray Clever, sir. <laughs> we mentioned uh, Dave at uh, Mom Anthony, the boys of varsity basketball coach. I, I think uh, you had a uh, winning streak of five straight state championships, Dave, and then you played Burlington, and I think it took a, now I was there that night, it took a bomb scare to snap the, uh, the streak. Or did you win that night? I don't remember now, but I... Okay. The streak of five. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> so they tried to stop him. It was Mount Anthony against Burlington, Mike, and there was a bomb scare at the Patrick Gym, and everybody laughed. And but they came back, and Mount Anthony won anyway. 
Yeah, yeah, for everything. The gentleman uh, taking the uh, videos of the uh, activities here, uh, Jerry Munger, who is uh, here from the uh, local public access. He does all the sports. Actually, when I said there's no such thing as a field hockey expert, Jerry actually is, so because <laughs> he does uh, field hockey games, and he'll be there on uh, the 28th for the uh, boys and girls uh, Vermont uh, Western Mass games, and uh, he'll do a great job on the uh, video of the uh, games and the play-by-play, -play, which I will assume will be sold to the uh, parents and the players and so forth. So, so that coming up. Thanks for being here today. Another gentleman I've known for a little while at the time of his retirement. He's coached at uh, Rutland High and also at MSJ and also at West Rutland. He's also been an assistant uh, at Castleton, assisted with the uh, Rutland High girls basketball uh, program. At, at the time of his retirement, he uh, and he isn't really retired now either. He does help out with the Rutland uh, girls basketball team. But uh, at the time uh, when he stepped down as a uh, boys basketball coach, uh, he uh, coached in what I felt were the two most famous boys basketball games in the history of the Rutland area. One was the Proctor West Rutland State Championship game in 1976 at the University of Vermont Patrick Gym, which was the final uh, small school uh, division championship uh, game ever played at the Patrick Gym before they moved on to uh, the Barry Auditorium. And he had a cocky sophomore by the name of Phil Bartlett on that team. He also uh, played uh, Leland and Gray. Actually, the Leland and Gray game was the final uh, game at the uh, Patrick Gym, come to think of it. Uh, West Rutland and Leland and Gray the fo following year, and uh, Ryan Boyle's dad played for Leland and Gray. Uh, so that tells you how long we've been around, uh, and uh, Leland and Gray did uh, win that game, and then uh, West Rutland came back and won the next year, the first year of the uh, state championship games of the very auditorium for the smaller uh, divisions. He also, Dave Kinsman, was the coach at uh, MSJ, when MSJ and uh, Rutland High played in the state championship game in 1984, and uh, the only time those two teams, uh, the two uh, for those uh, from Western Mass, Rutland and MSJ, both located here in Rutland, uh, the only time they've ever met for the state championship in basketball. I've known him for a long time. I used to live across the street from him. We had a lot of good times, and uh, maybe more to come, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, another uh, Hall of Fame coach, the legendary Dave Kinsman. Those are easy notes, Coach. That was 1976, that uh, Mount Anthony bomb scare. Was it the yeah, same year? Yeah, because we played the night before. It was the night before, and I was worried we were not going to be able to use the gym the next day. <laughs> and thanks for bringing that up about uh, Peter Boyle. Uh, that was really nice of you. Um, probably Phil will tell you that I owe all my success to coaching to him. <laughs> Because uh, 1976 was my first year as a varsity coach. And uh, I will say this, I was very fortunate that Coach Bartlett, as a freshman, he blew his knee out and never played his freshman year. But then he played uh, three successive years on three uh, state final teams, winning two out of three. So he did make my career a little better to start out, there's no question about it. Coach Hughes over here, uh, Greg's father, is a former player of mine. Also, Coach Wilson, the other one's a former player of mine, and I don't know, there may be somebody else out here. Coach Fredrickson could say the same. Uh, I think Coach Fredrickson mentioned something that I always felt was very important. I was fortunate enough to coach this All-Star game three different times. In 1984, uh, 1990, and 2000. And I think one of the biggest things that I thought that the players and coaches and also parents, I think too many times when we watch teams play, we make an impression of what we think a kid is like on the court. And we're awful guilty of not really knowing that kid, but thinking, well, that kid, uh, I, I don't like the way he does this and does, does that. I'm going to go back to 1984, and this is going to be tough for stretch, I know, but I'm going to bring this up. But 1984, uh, the final four that year at the University of Vermont was Hartford, MSJ, Brown, or excuse me, Mount Anthony, and Rutland High. So it was an all-South final four, which is, I don't think has been seen in quite a while. And 
as Jack said, Rutland and MSA played that game. And then we had the All-Star game, and you're looking at who you're going to choose, and your vision or thoughts about some of the players, oh, I'm not sure, you know, the, we had tough games with them, and I'm not sure I like their attitude or this and that. But in the end, in all the players that we took, when you get to meet them, and you sit down with them, it's so different than what your vision is when they're on the court. It, and as a player, I think it's so different. I think it's different today, oh, because of AAU. You guys get to see each other so much more than you would have 10 years ago. Because of AAU, you know each other better. Parents know just about everybody. Um, makes a big difference. But this game, there's no question in my mind, it's one of the great experiences you're going to have. To be able to have four days to practice, learn different things. Every coach does things a little different. They're all teaching the same thing, but there are different ways to teach them. Even though I'm retired, I still go to basketball camps in the summer. I've worked for Dave Cowens, uh, former Celtic great, for 30 years. I still go. I run the camp for two weeks, and one week I coach. Just one week. And when I get my team, I tell my team, I'm an old-fashioned coach. And they all look at me like, what does that mean? That means that you're going to be able to hear me. There will be no doubt. You'll hear me up close. And every one of them gets excited as long as you treat them the way you should treat them. Even though you may yell at them when they make a mistake, they still understand if when they do something well, you're really giving them a lot of good statements. But that is some of the things that you're able to do. I, I look back at my career, and I've been very fortunate to have coached a lot of very good players, met a lot of good players. Uh, 2000 on that team was uh, the young man that had the great career at UVM. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Coppenrath, yes. Now here he is playing. I believe if we went back and looked at the stats, I think he had eight points in that game. <clears throat> Probably about 12 rebounds. He was the MVP of the game. But at that point, did anybody think that he was going to be the player he was? No. Not even close. Like Michael tell you, his senior year. And he was a very good player. But to become the player that he did at the University of Vermont took a lot of hard work. And you can see, I'm sure a lot of you saw him play. All of you are capable if you want to put the time in. Now I'm going to take another kid who wasn't a very good player, and he'd be the first one to tell you this. He wasn't on any of those teams. He played for me as a freshman, sophomore, and a junior. He went on to Boston College and became a manager. Became a manager at Boston College. And it was four years was there. He was there when Billy Curley and that crew, they went to the final eight, I believe, that his senior year. He then went on to graduate school at Northern Arizona and then got hired at the University of Connecticut as head of equipment. So he was there when UConn has had some great years. The last two years, he's been at the University of Kansas <laughs> as assistant AD and as head of equipment. Uh, last year, I went to the Big 12 tournament in Oklahoma City. Not this year, but last year. Through him. Because he said, hey coach, what do you think? Would you like to go? I said, sure, I'd love to go. This year, my son and I and another kid who played for me, we were lucky enough to go to the University of Kansas for the last two games of the year. Uh, one was Saturday night, was on the uh, ESPN. It was the game Beasley had 39. And then the next night they played, uh, or Tuesday, Monday night they played uh, Texas Tech and won by 58. Sunday they had practice. We were in practice. Now I'm thinking about, here's this little kid, me, myself, who grew up in Heartland, Vermont. Probably half of you've never heard of that. And you talk about stoplights. No, there are no stoplights. Okay? And I'm out in Allen Fieldhouse. Now you've got to understand, Kansas 
The founder of basketball was the coach there, James Mason. My son and I and these other two people, we're playing knockout and playing horse on Island Fieldhouse. I'm kind of looking up and saying, my God, look at this little ball has been able to do for me in my life. And it was just an un unforgettable moment for me. But it would never have happened if somehow I had not have gotten involved in basketball. This game is a great game, not just because of the game, but because of the people you meet and the experiences you are going to be able to get out of it in the future. I hope you guys have a great game. I know it's going to be a lot of fun to come and watch it. So good luck to you. Work hard in your preparation. And we look forward to seeing you play. Thank you. Thank you The gentleman that uh, Dave was referring to, uh, his name is Larry here, he's about 6'8". He did smash the backboard, I think, before a playoff game at MSJ one day. <laughs> not sure if MSJ actually had the extra backboard that day or not, Dave, but I... But, uh, his I name was is, gone now. Oh, were you gone by that time? Okay. Yeah. But, uh, thank you very much. He is a Rutland native. He is uh, recently inducted into the Vermont Basketball uh, Coaches uh, Hall of Fame himself. I first... Uh, Knew him, even though I don't think he knew me very much. I, I was out of the uh, I was on the JV basketball team my first year at Kibble Union Academy. I was there for two years. I swam the next year, almost drowned in the uh, KUA pool, but that's a, that's another thing. And uh, I was scared to death of this guy. As <laughs> everybody I think there was at the time, Stretch, but uh, Stretch uh, used to uh, it was the uh, basketball and the uh, football at uh, KUA and. I, I really didn't know him that well then, but I got to know him very well later, and I consider him to be a very good friend, and I love his family, uh, the family uh, here from, from Rotland, and uh, just a wonderful, wonderful family, the uh, Gillum family of uh, Rotland, and uh, Stretch used to, uh, we used to go to the uh, to Mass in Lebanon on the school bus, so remember those days when his uh, two oldest kids, uh, who are now uh, probably in their 30s, were only like five and four years old, and <laughs> and, so, and I don't think I've been back, I hate to say it here, because this is a confession, but I don't think I've been back to Mass since uh, those days of Lebanon. And that was a long time ago. But it's my pleasure. He, uh, too, was a legendary uh, coach and an MSJ grad. He played on MSJ state championship team in 1954. They didn't win again until Coach Kinsman uh, uh, led the team in 1984. And with great pleasure, I would like to introduce Stretch Gillum. of the gang here, so that's why they had me go last. <laughs> the reason we used to take the guys to uh, church on Sunday, okay, we never had too many Catholics at the communion until I went there. So the headmaster said, well, you're going to drive them in. But they didn't get off campus very much. So, you know, the first Sunday, when they realized that's the first time they're going to get off campus, I might have had 10 Catholics that were true Catholics. The next week when they came back and told them they had an hour in town and they could do what they wanted to do, we had, we had to use an extra bus. <laughs> so, you know, that's the reason. And probably he wasn't a Catholic. No, <laughs> and that's why he hasn't been a convention since. <laughs> but uh, I thought I would just, I didn't know what everybody was going to do today, but I just kind of thought that I would tell you how, especially how Vermont gets to where we are now as far as this all-star thing is, is concerned. When I left Gateway and was hired at Hartford High School, my son came with me, which was a pretty good basketball player, and played two years with me at, at Hartford. And uh, there was a great guy, the coach at Spalding High School, Franny Pinard, which was trying to buck the whole situation that he wanted to put together an all-star team. Our headmasters in Vermont, as everybody kind of knows, are very difficult people to deal with especially the basketball committee. So they were getting shot down left and right. So he slowly, he knew some people down in NASA, down in Massachusetts at Quinnipiac and the Connecticut All-Stars had four divisions. So they got a Rhode Island team, two Massachusetts teams, and this Vermont team, which was kind of secretly done up at Spalding High School. Went down, it was a great day, and that was kind of the beginning of things. When we started the Alhambra, 
as they uh, did in 81, as Fredrickson was talking about, uh, we were selecting kids with, you know, the input from all the coaches around the state of who we were going to pick. And I, I did it one year, and it was very difficult because of the three division, four divisions, and getting kids involved in what we were going to do. A good friend of mine that coached up at, uh, up at uh, Newport, Gary Clifford, came up with the idea. I was the president of the association, and the first year I was kind of getting ahead of myself, and I kind of started AAU. And uh, we got shot down the first year by the headmasters to go and play, but the hockey kind of got together with a lawyer and kind of put the, the thing together. So we figured that was the next way that we would go to get AAU going in Vermont. So we got that started. And the next year after me, was Clifford was the, <coughs> the president of the organization, and he kind of said, you know, we're only got a few kids that make that Alhambra team every year, and it would be nice that we could give our seniors a chance to play. So we came up with the idea that we would have a North and South game, okay, through our coaches association, and, you know, we'd have a better chance of, you know, seeing all the kids play and pick the kids that way. So that kind of went on pretty pretty well to start with. We used to let every senior try out for it. It got to be kind of difficult at times because we had so many kids, so many seniors. And then I think our new movement after we got going, uh, I guess it was uh, the girls coach at, uh, at Mount Anthony that decided that we would kind of vote on it and you know, select the field, which I think was, was a good idea. And you know, I think that this North-South game, or actually now it's the Senior All-Star game, has worked, you know, very, very well for us. So, you know, that's kind of how we kind of got up to what we're doing. I did the game in, in 1984 and had an awful lot of fun and uh, did a, you know, and got involved with some good kids. I think everything that Coach Kimball said and uh, <laughs> that basically you get a chance, you know, to be together, mold together, for a week, you know, meet guys that uh, you thought were, you know, your enemies, and you went back and forth and banged away, and then all became great friends, and you have a great time. I know it's great for the coaches because you see kids all the time, as you're as long as I've been around, and you, you kind of see kids that play the game, how much fun they have. I'm really glad that Rutland and especially Mr. Bartlett, uh, Coach Bartlett, have taken this thing over and taken it by the bootstraps and doing an outstanding job and getting it back to where we're going to have a camp, where we're going to be together for four or five days, get to make a good friendship. And uh, I think that uh, that'll work out, you know, very, very well. And uh, we should really enjoy the week here and all the things that we got going for you. It's going to be very, very nice. And uh, good luck to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stretch, uh, Stretch Gillum, and our thanks to our Hall of Fame coaches, uh, Dave Kinsman and uh, also Dave Fredrickson, and uh, Mike Donahue from the Burlington Free Press. Just uh, want to remind you, the camp uh, starts on June 24th, which uh, is what, uh, Dave, Tuesday of that week? Uh, or, uh, again, a KUA education, but I, let me still think, uh, 24th, 26th? <laughs> it's Tuesday. The game itself is on Saturday, uh, June 28th, and uh, the game says the girls' game starts at one. The boys have started three. Friday night live, which is a special uh, activity here in Rutland, uh, will be the night before. That should be a great time for all of you, and uh, we'll catch you uh, in a couple of months in June. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, for coming today. Thank you, and we'll catch you uh, in June for the first of the Western Mass basketball game. Thank you.